I don't look back on my life with regrets because at the time I loved my social identity of being the tough guy and being popular because of football. I realize that some of this might be shocking for some of you reading this, but anything I've portrayed to anyone in the past six years has been a lie to conceal my secret struggle. We live in a, a small community. You know, there's not a lot to do on a Friday night. The most important thing in the fall is to go out and watch and, and see how their local football team is. And it's, it's kind of a way of life. And as a coach, we try to make our community proud. The nature of football is you get the cheers when you hit hard. You get the cheers when you hit big. The pure recognition when you're the one that can hammer it. You know, we all played it in junior high, high school, and then my boys was the youth football, so they all played the, in the youth football program here in Indianola. And I'd say football is real important, you know, to us anyway, because I think it teaches um, kids how to be a part of a team, it teaches you work ethic, it teaches responsibility, and there, there's a lot of life lessons in football. From a mother's perspective, it's a blessing and probably a curse, because now we know. I know for a fact that all the things I've experienced in my life are from using my head as a weapon. Well, Zach uh, played for me in, on the varsity team in 2008 and 2009. He was a very hard worker and he was very passionate. And so anytime you take somebody that's hardworking and passionate and you <laughs> mix them together, you're going to get somebody that performs at, at a higher level naturally. Just kind of the kind of guy you were scared of. People respected him and they didn't want to go head to head with him, I can, I can tell you that. I was always able to disguise a lot of my actions in the eyes of other people by making it look like I was just extremely motivated or something like that. I was always shorter than a lot of other players and learned to put my head down so I could have the edge and win every battle. You have to push the body to certain limits, but there's some body parts you do that with and there's some body parts you don't do that with. Zach used his helmet and his head in, in certain situations that, that obviously hurt him. I can look back and remember getting headaches during practice. Of course, by now, I had gained the reputation from my coaches and classmates about being a tough-nosed kid and a hard hitter. So I took this social identity with pride and never wanted to tell anyone about the headaches I got from practices and games. Zach did suffer, uh, I believe, three concussions his, his senior year. We went down to a team camp in Missouri where he got his first concussion. The headache was so intense I could barely talk to anyone. As usual, I sucked it up and practiced the whole time. By the last scrimmage that day, I could barely walk or call the plays. When the team got back, um, Coach Easter had brought in and said, hey, he's seen a doctor. It was a concussion, but he's been cleared to play. Either the first or second game, I got another bad concussion during the game. Don't really remember much, except I didn't get pulled out of the game until I could barely get up and walk. My buddy Nick told me that at one point, I looked at him cross-eyed. I said, are you OK? Uh, he says, I'm fine, and I said, no, are you okay? You have to look me in the eyes and tell me that. And he just kind of put his head down. And then ended up having the third and final concussion his senior year. I don't remember anything from the game, except from the game tape and from what my friends tell me. I went head-to-head -head with a running back at full speed on the first play during a quarterback rollout to try to run him over. It wasn't long during the third quarter when my helmet came off during a play. And I guess I hit a guy without a helmet on, head to head. I just said, you're done. And you're done for the year. You're done for football. There's no more. My name is Alla Epperson. I was Zach Easter's girlfriend for a very long time. My name is Will. <laughs> <laughs> you sound exactly the same each time. He's a dork. And we are in his bedroom with 
the story he wrote telling what he went through and how he suffered. Now that I'm still having post-concussion problems six years after my last diagnosed concussion, I figure it's time to get things off my chest about my hidden struggle with depression, anxiety, and headaches. All of a sudden, his mind betrayed him, and he didn't know what was happening, and he didn't know who he was anymore. He just knew he wasn't the same Zach Easter. And at the root of that, he knew it was because of the concussions he sustained. Sometimes I couldn't tell which one would kill me first, the depression, anxiety, self-hatred, self-esteem, body image, emotions, and angry outbursts. All I know is I always felt like a lot of my actions are not me. He struggled silently because he didn't want to tell people what he was struggling with. The day-to-day short-term memory loss, like not being able to function on a daily basis, that's embarrassing for people. And then one day he uh, called me and I was like, well, what is it, what's going on? And he goes, I'm really afraid I have something called CTE. Um, but that's when he first kind of told the whole story to me. Um, and then a couple months later is when he kind of mentioned it to his parents for the first time. And on his, his 24th birthday, he said, well, Mom, well, I got news for you. The, the doctor says I have CTE. And it kind of caught me off guard. And I thought, well, maybe that's just you know what they said or thought. And then from there on, it just seemed like everything went downhill pretty fast. What we know about CTE is that when you experience hits, there's a protein called TAW protein that's released from your gut and it goes straight to your brain. If you have a normally functioning brain, it gets processed out. If you have a brain that's been damaged, the TAW protein sits in your brain and it starts to deteriorate your brain cells. Your emotional um, side of things gets impaired your sight, your speech. Around this time is when I started feeling depressed. I felt ashamed that I was hurt and had to sit out. I don't know exactly what I felt, but this is when I started to never be the same Zach Easter. I saw a change in his kind of attitude. And then I would just go over to his house and he'd be hammered. And then he quit his job and I was just like, that's not Zach, Zach's never not had a job. He had larger than life goals in college, his last year especially. He started struggling. We took him to doctors. I feel like I'm losing control of my thoughts and emotions. One minute, I'm OK, and the next, I feel very down. I still feel dizzy and like my balance is way off, off and on through the day. The one doctor confirmed that he was having some early symptoms of CTE and that there was no way to really diagnose it because it's, it's, um, you can only diagnose it after death. And I sat there floored. When I first heard about CTE, I didn't, I didn't know much about it. Realistically, I just thought it was the guys maybe played in the NFL, you know, 10, 15 years and went through a college career in the NFL. You know, it's a lot more physical than anything. Just assumed that, you know, the repeated blows that those guys would take at the high speed I figured that maybe that would have something to do with it. I never thought a person just playing high school football would get it. And I think in the end, especially with the work that he had done with his journal and with the story that he left, it became clear to me that he believed it was more important to help save another athlete, to save another family from having to go through what we went through. I only read the journals once, you know? I, I don't want to sit there, I don't want to read them again, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know, I like to think about the fun times and the, that kind of stuff. You know, we go outside and then we just, we literally just walk around. I guess it gives me time to think and kind of a chance to get away, if, if that makes sense. Zach says, Mom, I want my brain donated to science so that I can help someone else. A young Indianola man took his own life because he believed he was suffering from the crippling effects of CTE. Zach shot himself in the heart at Lake Aquabi, taking care not to damage his brain that he believed had been ravaged by chronic traumatic encephalopathy. 
It took me a very, very long time to walk up to the casket. Um, and all I could say was, I'm sorry. And it was, it was really hard, because as an athletic trainer, your number one goal is to keep these kids safe. And it, we didn't, and he knew it. I know there's a kid out there going through something similar to what I went through. This kid's not quite sure why he changed all of a sudden. He's always scared to tell anyone about the pain because he doesn't even understand it himself. Spread the word of mental illness and concussions, and over time, please spread my story. Great things can still happen from this event. Think of all the lives that can be saved if all of you come together and help people by spreading the word. Football's not gonna go away. I don't want football to go away. I do think we have to do more to keep our athletes safer. There needs to be more research. We need to change the protocol on concussions. Listen to Zach.